Hi, I'm Steve Good with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Last week I uploaded a demonstration video showing uh, you all how I use Corel Draw X4 to create scroll saw patterns that you see posted on my blog. During that video I suggested that if uh, the demand was high enough I would consider going ahead and creating some tutorials uh, for those of you that wish to either purchase this program or already have purchased it and are struggling to get started with it. CorelDRAW is a fairly complex graphics program and like all of these tools there's a learning curve to it and I've been using it long enough that I think I can help you get past that learning curve a little bit. So uh, with that tonight I'm going to start the first video in a series of tutorials on CorelDRAW for creating scroll saw patterns. There are a lot of tools in CorelDRAW that we as pattern designers do not really need. Now that doesn't mean you don't want to understand those tools and what they can do because you might find a need for them at some point. But basically when we design patterns we are doing simple line drawings in black and white. So any of the tools that uh, use color are not very important to us so we can skip over those. Uh, so I might uh, touch on the tool and explain what it is, but going into detail on something we're not going to need uh, is a waste of time for our purposes, so I'm going to skip over that. So uh, there may be some need for you to get more training after you get through these tutorials, but for the most part, I think when we finish up, you will be comfortable designing basic scroll saw patterns. Okay, with that, let's talk a little bit about uh, why you would want to design your own scroll saw patterns. Well, first of all, um, it allows you to customize patterns for your needs. Uh, if you have a customer that wants a, uh, a particular pattern and they need their company's name on it or a personal name or whatever, CorelDRAW gives you the ability to create that pattern and add that customization and get the product out the door quickly. Uh, even things like uh, Christmas ornaments with names in them or name plaques, uh, you name it, you'll be able to create those patterns that are custom one-of-a-kind patterns for your customer or for your gift. The other thing is it allows you to create projects that no one's ever seen before. They're truly your own unique project. And if you do craft shows, you know that uh, the last thing you want to do is show up with a product that the same guy, you know, three boosts down is selling. You want to be unique and you want to uh, want your customers to know that you're an artist and you are uh, the person who created and built the projects. The last reason is it's a lot of fun. Uh, when I started learning to create my own scroll saw patterns, the hobby took on a whole different, uh, went to a whole different level for me. Uh, so it, personally, if, if I didn't have the ability to create the scroll saw patterns, I'm not sure I would have stayed with the hobby. I love cutting, but I also love designing uh, new projects and something different to cut. So there's a lot of good reasons for wanting to design your own patterns. Now all we need to do is get you started in how to do that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are the different types of graphics programs that are on the market and what the differences are and why I chose CorelDRAW as my program of choice. There are two basic types of graphics drawing programs on the computer and we'll explain that in more detail but right now let's just talk about the fact that there's a vector graphics program and a bitmap graphics program. And examples of vector graphics programs are CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, and Inkscape. Uh, bitmap graphics programs examples are Photoshop, PaintShop Pro X3, and the paint program that comes with your Windows PC. So you've got a lot of options out there to choose from, and it's hard for someone who's not... Um, uh, used to these types of programs to decide what they want to use and what the best uh, features of each would be. So let's go a, a little bit into that uh, next. Let's talk first about the difference between the vector graphics and the bitmap graphics and why most of our pattern design will be done in vector graphics type programs. 
Okay, CorelDRAW is a vector graphics program. And to demonstrate what this means, I've got a couple little pieces of clip art here on the screen that I want to show you. And then we'll talk a little bit more in detail of why they're different. Let's look at these two lines right here as an example. And I think I'll zoom in on these a little bit so we get a little better look at them here. I've got two lines on the screen. This is a vector graphics line. This is a bitmap graphics line. This line would be created in the vector graphics programs like CorelDRAW, and this line would have been drawn in a program like Photoshop. Now, you can already see on the screen here the difference. The bitmap graphic is kind of jaggy. I'm going to scroll in on it really close here. And you can see where uh, the line is made up of a series of pixels uh, that have been anti-alias to try to make them look smooth, but uh, they're actually quite jaggy. As opposed to if we go over here and look at the vector graphics line, you can see we have a well-defined line no matter how close we zoom in. Okay, That is the primary difference between vector and bitmap. Now, if we look at the bitmap graphics, uh, you can think of that as a uh, checkerboard and it, with the ability to turn on each of the squares on the checkerboard on or off. So we have a defined set of a grid where we can turn pixels on and off. In a bitmap graphic, when you draw, as you draw across the screen, those pixels are turned on. So because the pixels are side by side and they're well defined in that grid, you will get jaggies as you draw. Now this works fine for uh, photographic type work or you know things with lots of color in it and lots of subtle uh, uh, shade changes across the graphics. That's what bitmap graphics are good at. On a vector graphics program, rather than these dots that make up this line being stored in a grid of dots that are on and off, this is actually a mathematical formula that says we are going to draw, the program says we are going to draw a line starting at point X and Y, extending up to point X and Y, and we're just going to turn on the dots between those two points. And it also has the color information of the color of the line and other things as well. So every time you take this line right here and select it and we resize it, it's actually just recreating that mathematical formula to say now my X and Y starting point is here and it is and the X and Y is here and we're going to still just draw those lines between the two. If I decide to rotate that line, it simply changes the mathematical equation and you can see that the line stays perfectly straight, crisp and clean no matter how we change the size of this line or or for that matter the angle uh, that it's at. On a bitmap graphics, if we try to rotate it, um, it, stay, it, it's still just rotating that grid of dots. So you can't resize this line without making the what we call the jaggies look even worse. So when you're designing a scroll saw pattern and you want to be able to cut a nice, fine, crisp line, you want to go with vector graphics. It just allows you to produce a cleaner looking graphic that you can cut. So the vector graphics programs are what we will use for drawing our patterns. Now we do use bitmap graphics to make patterns for portrait style patterns and I'll get into that much later in the set of tutorials. Uh, luckily CorelDRAW comes with uh, a paint pro a bitmap paint program and a vector paint program. So for the price of CorelDRAW, you get both of those applications. Down here a little more, I'm just going to show you another sample. On the, let me get my zoom tool here. On the left, I have a bitmap graphic, and if I zoom into this little curly here, again you can see these anti-aliased uh, jaggy lines. That's the bitmap. Zoom into the exact same section over here in the vector graphics, and you can see how nice and crisp and clear it is. Now, the other thing about the uh, the uh, vector graphics is I can change the color data for it also. So all I have to do is click over here on the palette, and it changes the color of that particular graphic, as opposed to if I were to try to do the same thing over here on the bitmap graphic. 
let me zoom in on it, you can see that the color data is not stored. Uh, so when I click on it, it doesn't change the color. We'd actually have to go into a bitmap graphics program and try to manipulate this graphic to change the color of it. Again, we don't use color a lot in uh, scroll saw pattern uh, designing, but there are times when being able to change the color is handy. Um, I, for instance, like to do a gray pattern with a black outline, uh, and so that's how I can quickly change that. Uh, some people like to do a gray pattern with a red outline. They think the red is easier to cut. Other people want the pattern to be white and just red lines. So uh, as we're creating our patterns, you can see that we can make very quick changes. So for this set of tutorials, we're going to use CorelDRAW. Those are a few of the basic reasons. Uh, I am going to be using CorelDRAW X4. Uh, the latest version is X5, and uh, I'm going to look at upgrading, and I may do that before we start the next series of videos. All this information stays the same, uh, but I want us all to be basically with the same user interface, so I'll look at picking up a copy of uh, of X5 uh, sometime soon here, and maybe we'll do the tutorials in that, especially when we get into the more detailed stuff. So it's already gotten a little longer than I wanted it to be here, but I wanted to get through some of these very, very basics with you before we got started. So I'll stop right here, and in the next couple of days, we'll begin learning about the user interface for the program. We'll talk about the menus and the toolbars uh, and the tool palette and where they are, how to get to them, things like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too boring, but I wanted to get this out of the way so we could actually get into the designing of the patterns and what it takes to do that. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.